Welcome to 12th lecture of video course on travelogy. Today's topic is boundary lubrication. It appears uh, from the name itself, the boundary is a marginal. You can say it is a marginal between dry lubrication and full film lubrication. Lubricant is present on the surface, but not that much which can reduce friction substantially wear substantially. There will be reduction in friction, there will be reduction in wear, but it will be more than what we get in full film lubrication. So, it is not true lubrication as such, but in many situation under high load speed, high load low speed condition and high temperature condition this kind of lubrication mechanism will occur. Sometime it occurs at the start when the component is totally new, the surface roughness of the component is very high during that time boundary lubrication will occur. So, end of this lecture we will cover one case study on that show that initially where it is high and subsequently it comes down. As in the last lecture we discussed there are two modes of boundary lubrication, one is physical attraction or physical attachment of lubricant layer on the surface, another one is a chemical attachment. Chemical attachment is more like corrosion, what we use a word as sacrificial uh, layer, while uh, physical absorption is nothing like a sacrificial layer, it is attachment and detachment because of the molecular attraction. The lubricant will get attached to the surface and at high temperature it will get detached or under sliding condition it will be disrupt or it will be detached from the surface. As the first line says uh, this is known as a fizzy sorption or attraction hackers because of the van der Waal forces. This figure clearly indicates that the lubricant thickness itself is a 2 nanometer, it is very very thin layer. Many times oxide layer on the surface is more than this layer. In reality, every metal is subjected to boundary lubrication, even in absence of liquid lubricant or in absence of boundary additive lubricants. That is a natural phenomena. If material is open to environment, it will get oxidized, a thin layer will be made, and thin layer will not be having very good chemical affinity towards other metal. So, it will give the interface much lower shear strength interface. Well, in this case, this is sketch shows that this is the polar end O shape or a circle shape, this is the tail. As in my previous lecture, I mentioned this tail helps us as a carpet you walk on this carpet, it will simply bend, it comes back to the original position when you move away. Same thing with the surfaces, if surface comes in uh, contact with this layer, this thin cantilever bends easily elastically and the surface is uh, surface passed away, then it will come back to the original shape. Sometimes we use a word as oiliness additives, it will stick to the surface. Now, what is the theme behind, what is the physics behind this? It says that energy will be lowered whenever a molecule, whenever this additives is absorbed on the surface, overall energy will come down. That means, you need to provide some energy to remove this layer. That energy may be thermal energy, may be mechanical energy, but you have to provide to remove this layer and that is why there is advantages. It reduces the overall energy, it brings some equilibrium. However, we say many times that um, attachment and detachment is a continuous process, that is nothing is going to get damaged on that if it is under normal load and uh, normal speed. You are not talking about the severe load and severe speed. In that situation, it will not create any problem, it will not get damaged. It will only detach from the surface and after some time it will come back and attach. So, it is a continuous process. 
we need not change a lubricant oil frequently if that is a situation if that is a mechanism. This uh, slide was shown also in the last, lec uh, last lecture. We say that um, when we want a physical attraction then it need to have some properties. First thing is that it should get dissolved in solute. If it is not able to adjust with the lubricating oil, it is not get able to get mixed with the lubricant oil, then we cannot use that lubricant additive. Another thing we say that with attachment and detachment is generally encouraged by the dilute concentration. The concentration is lower than it will be frequent phenomena. However, the concentration is higher. There are many molecules available for the few sites. Then, even though attachment and detachment may be continuous process, but it will not reflect in the experiments. We will not be able to find much difference in coefficient of friction, much difference in wear rate. This table indicated um, if I if we do not use any additives, any uh, boundary additives. In this case, we took example of oleic acid, which is uh, one of the boundary additives having oiliness properties. If it is uh, operated or uh, tribal surface is operated with a pure mineral oil, no additives in that, simple base oil, the coefficient of friction, estimated coefficient of friction was 0.36. I am using the word estimation because we can never get exact value of coefficient of friction, it is only an estimation, it will having some sort of probability. When we add 2 percent of oleic acid, we can find the substantial change in coefficient of friction from 0 0.36 to 0 0.25, that is a substantial change. But after that, increasing oleic acid is not going to change significantly. So, that is why we require little bit of uh, boundary additives to get favorable results. We do not require complete oil to be boundary additives because that will be very viscous, difficult to pump, difficult to move. That is why we do not use 100 percent unless until, until it is required from the situation. This figure shows how the coefficient of friction varies for different oil and oil additives. The A figure is shown clearly that with the increase in the temperature, viscosity decreases. The decrease in the viscosity coefficient of friction also will decrease, but it after a certain temperature what we know as a critical temperature. After critical temperature it will get unbound coefficient of friction is going to increase continuously assuming or re treating that lubricant is completely removed from the surface. Even though lubricant remain there, but it will not be effective interlocked at the interface. That is a E curve which is a paraffin based. However, if you use a boundary additives of fatty acid is a boundary additives, then coefficient of friction is increasing after certain uh, temperature and that critical temperature is greater than critical temperature for paraffin oil. However, when it reacts with a copper, it makes some chemical layer, it is corroding the copper making some uh, boundary additive layer, then this temperature is increasing substantially. From here when we say it is around 70 degree, 80 degree, it may reach 150, 140 degree. Similarly, for other oils, it can change different, it can show different behavior. Why it is happening with the temperature, why this kind of phenomena is happening, that can be explained using these two sketches. Here it shows that um, ordered film on the substrate or substrate or substance and it is a below critical temperature. Almost all the sites are occupied, surface is not free from this molecule. However, if the temperature increases, then thermal forces will be on higher order compared to van der Waal forces. So, molecular attraction will come down, obviously that relative molecular attraction will come down or uh, relative force will be lesser compared to thermal forces and we will be getting disordered lubricant thin or uh, lubricant film on the surface. 
that is a reason why we do not get a very good performance at a high temperature or temperature above critical temperature. In that situation we need to see need to think that yes, lubricating oil should satisfy our requirement. If we know the operating temperature is high then we need to choose, choose proper lubricant additive. It will not that you whatever you choose lubricant additive it is going to survive it will work. It works only after uh, works below some critical temperature it does not work beyond that. And uh, it is uh, known that this kind of uh, thermal equilibrium can be estimated or uh, it can be got using the Gibbs free energy. As I mentioned in the last lecture that Gibbs free energy is more like potential energy you and require some energy to remove this lubricant layer from the surface and that Gibbs energy can be estimated using this relation. This clearly says as the temperature increases Gibbs energy is going to go down. If Gibbs energy is lesser that means you need to supply lesser energy to disturb the lubricant film. If this energy is more then you require more energy to disturb the film or it will be more stable compared to stability at the high temperature. That is why it says that uh, at high temperature it is getting uh, deabsorbed and that is shown again through this figure which we showed uh, in the previous slide. When it is a disrupted then what will happen surface can easily push this lubricant or lubricant molecules from the surface leave surface without lubricant layer where it will increase in this situation. Temperature obviously the, as the temperature increases where it will increase when we are treating or when we are using boundary additives, but that is not 100 percent true. Few lubricants they work at the high temperature they do not work at the low temperature you may get very high coefficient of friction at the low temperature, but when you go for high temperature when you operate at the, uh, those lubricant added to the high temperature coefficient of friction will come down. That is generally known as extreme pressure additives or additives which work with chemical action or they react with the surface they make some product they corrode the surface they make sacrificial layer, but they protect the surface or reduce the coefficient of friction compared to dry friction or compared to unstable film. So, we can study that we say the chemis option is uh, happening because of chemical action and uh, as the first line indicates because physically adsorbs boundary lubricant or boundary additives either will get detached decompose or melt any of the situation is possible it can get detached because of the very low molecular attraction compared to their thermal forces. It can decompose also it's quite polypose they get detached as well as decompose. Decompose means the long molecular uh, arrangement structure gets broken and it may melt also it can change the state from solid to semi solid to liquid or completely distort the chemical structure anything is possible that is why we require chemis option at the high temperature and as I mentioned earlier that it is a form of corrosion we are doing purposefully we are introducing corrosion purposefully. So, to make this kind of uh, boundary layer what we require we require a chemically active group is something chlorine sulfur phosphorus they are chemically active. If you leave these chemicals along with the metals they will make some chemical reagent on the metal surface which will be having low coefficient of friction and low wear rate compared to metal surface itself. So, this is a chemical active group in addition we require a reactive surface of material all the metals have a reactive surface by and large ceramics they do not have that much or polymers they do not have that much reactive surface. So, chemical additives will be useful only for the metals or by and large for the metals not be very effective for ceramics not very effective for the polymers or in other word chemical composition required for the metals will be different than chemical composition which is required for ceramic materials for polymer materials. And uh, 
there is a another one uh, guideline given over here. You say that uh, try to use both the process physical absorption as well as chemical absorption both are possible. If I choose a surface which is chemically as well as a physically acting with this uh, lubricant additives then I can get good results at a low temperature physical attachment at a high temperature chemical attachments same lubricant additives can be used. That is why we can show with the diagram you see the physical absorption below one critical temperature this this uh, blue color line I am showing as a temperature line or uh, from left to right we are trying to show this temperature is going to increase at the low temperature physical absorption is sufficient at the high temperature chemical absorption is sufficient and there is always a gap between we generally they do not overlap reason being if there is a physical absorption if there is a lubricant layer already there then chemical absorption will not happen unless it is clean completely if there is a something already on the surface it will not be reactive towards the chemical uh, active group. So, there is need to be some gap and that gap is known as a temperature distress gap. We should never operate the equipment in that gap either the this lower side and a higher side we need to design or otherwise this temperature distress gap need to be minimum or we should not use a one metal or one additive we may use a, a composition active group for the physical absorption of the low temperature another group high temperature. So, two different groups are used in that case quite possible there will not be temperature distress gap it can be without that gap. Now, some mechanism is uh, specified as mentioned on this uh, slide we said during each contact the contact layer is rubbed off it is nothing like that where is stopped completely it is getting rubbed off that is why they are using the word boundary lubrication and after rubbing off it gets uh, exposed to another uh, corrosive media or we say corrosive uh, liquid or corrosive substance. In that case a uh, next layer will come immediately. So, it is again a dynamic process rubbing off of lubricant layer and reformation of the lubricant layer on the surface, but in that process what is going to happen? slowly slowly chemical additives is going to deplete it already reacted with the surface it will get depleted. So, it is not as good as a physical absorption what we say in physical absorption there is no change it can be reabsorbed again on the surface without much problem. However, in the chemical case it has reacted mid oxide layer is removed now we require a new percentage or some additional percentage for the next reaction. So, what we can say that whenever we are thinking about the chemical absorption lubricant additives depletion we need to be accounted it will get depleted with the time it is nothing like that once you add lubricant additive it will survive forever it has a certain duration after that duration that lubricant additive will be depleted you need to refurnish that right and uh, that is uh, this point says clearly and they need to have one good balance good uh, trade off they should be active enough to protect the surface, but should not be active too much active. So, that uh, increase the corrosion rate or the high alarmic rate. Now, if I compare if I compare dry lubrication I compare a boundary lubrication by physical absorption or we compare chemical absorption. So, we can uh, compare on uh, wear and uh, sliding distance chart we studied the wear rate we know that as sliding distance increases total wear volume will increase wear rate we are not talking we are talking of the total wear from the scratch how much wear has occurred. If I plot this first this line is clearly showing orchard law in dry condition they are in proportion sliding distance and vol wear volume will be having by and large linear profile linear variation by and large. Now, when you come to the uh, mixed lubrication uh, we come to the chemical absorption or chemical layer then there is uh, also loss of chemical uh, loss of the metal surface because the additives is reacting with the metal 
when it is acting with uh, uh, reacting with a metal that means a fraction of that metal is also getting removed from the surface. How fast and uh, how slow that will depend on the chemical uh, composition of the additives and the material that can be decided, but generally that is a non-linear it is not as linear as the Archer law states. You can see here that wear rate is lesser where, where volume is lesser compared to the dry case when comparing it, but it has a non-linear profile. This gap may increase may decrease depend on how fast the distance has been traveled. If it is a very fast there is a possibility it goes down it goes up also and this is shows up with a physical absorption. We know the physical absorption case most of the time the wear of the lubricant layer is happening detachment of the lubricant layer is happening it is not reacting with the substance it is not reacting with a component it is not reacting with the material naturally wear rate in case of the physical absorption will be lower than chemical absorption whatever the situation in that case if I uh, treat uh, without considering the temperature or without accounting the temperature in that case I will be getting always this curve. However, if I think from other side say that physical absorption will not work when temperature is high then in that case physical absorption case whatever I am quoting here it will turn out to be red line or say that these two will not occur simultaneously that is why they should not be compared temperature will be always there temperature factor also always need to be accounted. So, whenever physical absorption happens chemical absorption should not happen whenever chemical absorption happens physical absorption should not happen there need to be have two separate situation if I compare I may get wrong results or wrong uh, conclusion so, that is why we use this kind of curve we say this is uh, dry uh, mineral oil without any additives it shows a better performance compared to the dry lubrication because there is a lubricating oil and is cool the surface uh, distribute the stresses equally. While uh, coming to physical absorption there is a fatty acids you can see clearly there is a transition temperature T r beyond that temperature fatty acid coefficient of friction is increasing substantially. Now, if I neglect the or if I use some sort of a lubricant additives where the temperature gap is not there it is acting instantaneously wherever the fatty acid is failing EP additives or uh, EB lubricant or we say that extreme pressure lubricant is acting immediately and that is why I can see that coefficient of friction is constant it is not changing or we say that EP additives are ineffective at that temperature a lower temperature they do not have any chemical reaction with the surface, but as this temperature increases they are going to react with the surface. That is why I mentioned in my last slide also whenever we make a lubricant we generally add chemical related to physical absorption chemical related to chemical absorption and EP additive is another form of uh, uh, chemical absorption we say that it is happening under the high temperature and extreme pressure. If pressure is very high temperature will also increase there. So, they are related or chemical absorption phenomena can be said as uh, extreme pressure uh, phenomenon. So, overall if I want to make a lubricant a good lubricant package I will be using mineral oil or uh, carrier fluid with fatty acid plus EP additives overall package gives a satisfactory performance to us it gives a low coefficient of friction compared to pure base oil compared to EPA additives and base oil compared to fatty acid and base oil overall package need to have all together. So, whatever the transient case if the temperature is going very high EPA additives can react otherwise they will remain silent they will not work even though the cost is increasing by delta. But overall we need good results and there are always uncertainties in machines. So, if the local temperature is going beyond certain temperature then EP additives should work. Now, we say that uh, what are the desirable properties uh, from a boundary lubricant I am talking boundary lubricant from the both the point of view is a physical absorption as well as chemical absorption. We say that need to have a dissolvability in the lubricating oil if they are not able to get dissolved in the lubricating oil they do not have any use if they are not thoroughly getting mixed then there is no use if we are able to see additive separate lubricating oil separate then it does not have much utility. 
right and uh, it should be able to resist the penetration of the surface asperities. When this one surface asperity is approaching the other surface, these asperities should be covered with the lubricant additives. So, that it is not getting touched or is not coming in uh, direct contact with the surface as far as possible. So, in that case where, where, uh, where will be in mild region, if they are uh, asperities are able to penetrate in other surface then where volume will be increase, where rate will increase. So, that is why we prefer to use a long chain alcohols for physical absorption amines or fatty acids, these are all three are for the uh, physical absorption chlorine, phosphorus, sulfur or for the chemical composition. Above all the as uh, we discuss in a friction chapter or friction lectures that we need to have low shear strength of the interface. If interface does not have a low shear strength, whole travelogy comes to the 0, it does not have any use then. We need to make interface having low shear strength and that is necessary condition for using any lubricant. If they are this kind of boundary additives are not able to give us a low shear strength of interface then does not have a much use. So, that is why you need to have low shear strength either directly getting attached to the surface or um, when chemically attaching the surface. In addition what we can demand we say that high melting point they should not get disturbed as the temperature increases. So, if uh, physical addition or uh, physical adsorption is able to sustain up to 250 degree to 300 degree centigrade that will be preferable choice. In that case we, we are not going hard with the physical uh, chemical absorption, because we know chemical absorption is going to corrode the surface it uh, lubricant additives will get depleted and we need to refurnish the lubricant. And is a finally says that uh, it need to suit the metal which we are using. Here the word you are even using the metals because mostly this kind of additives are effective with the metals, they are very less effective with the polymers and the ceramics. Uh, this is an example which shows a stearic acid which is uh, boundary additives, it has a melting uh, point around 69 degree centigrade when uh, we are talking about the absolute without any reaction. However, when it reacts with the copper surface copper stearate it melts at the 120 degree centigrade which is a, uh, relatively higher compared to 69 degree centigrade. Similarly, and the, if there is a, a chloride or a chlorine available as a chemical additives which goes hard with the chemical absorption, then iron chloride which as a solid form as a sacrificial layer temperature is very high the 649 degree centigrade that means this can sustain above 500 degree centigrade temperature without failure. However, uh, if you want to further on a higher site, then sulphur should act. Obviously, the iron sulphide which will melt at the 1170 degrees centigrade gives a very high temperature, they can be used as a high temperature additives. They are giving good results at the high temperature. However, we know very well the pollution is an additional consideration. Whenever pollution comes or we have to think about pollution we need to discard chloride, we need to discard sulphides. So, overall we can say the physical absorption should give a future or will be a better for a future compared to chemical absorptions. Right? Now, this slide shows um, because there are I, I found uh, some discrepancies in the books, people or um, researcher have written a boundary lubrication separately and extreme pressure um, uh, lubrication separately. I am just trying to compare over here, we say that boundary lubrication as per them is restricted to the system where there is a th thermodynamic reversibility. That means, attachment and detachment is thermodynamically reversible at high temperature uh, lubricant will detach. So, this is a what they have quoted that uh, boundary lubricant should be named if there is a thermo dynamic reversibility, if there is no thermodynamic reversibility which mostly happens in chemical absorption cases. In that case we should not be calling that the boundary lubrication, they should be called as extreme pressure lubrication because this kind of mechanism acts under high temperature and generally high temperature occurs because of the high pressure. So, what we say uh, in this case there are three examples chlorine, sulfur and phosphorus, they act with the surface and they are known as a EP additives EP lubricant. 
they are ineffective or these all three are ineffective at the low temperature case, low load and low temperature case. So, interesting point to be noted for here that people say this is a low optimization, wherever I need lubricant from EP additives are able to form it, whereas a high temperature we require lubrication, a factor lubrication which can be sustained there for some time and EP additives are able to make it. So, that is going to give us or this kind of additives are giving an optimum performance as per the requirement, wherever it is required it gives, it does not uh, 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 make lubricant flow everywhere. If the gear pair is coming in a contact, wherever the contact point comes lubricant firm is made that point there because of the high temperature, high pressure and the corrosion occurs for some fraction of second there itself. However, it is the clearly mentioned clear over here that um, they have a good properties, they are nice, they are favorable from a commercial point of view, but from society point of view they are not encouraged they are carcinogenic nature, they are harmful, they are polluting environment that is why there is a problem. Interesting story about this is that in a common petrol sulfur will be there and sulfur acts as a chemical absorption agent, it can react with the surface, it can make a lubricant film and that is going to give us a protective layer that is a useful but because of the pollution now the it has been emphasized the petrol should be free of sulfur or it should be below certain limit or the sulfur percentage should be minimum to this percentage it is uh, costly in two fold first you require process to separate the sulfur from the petrol first thing second you require some lubricant additives to be mixed with the lubricating oil, so that surfaces can be prevented from the wear. So, because of the pollution uh, picture or pollution uh, consideration, cost is going to increase. That is why we have always a problem whenever we use uh, this chemical absorption uh, techniques, then uh, it may survive for 5 years or 10 years and after that environmental issue will come again we have to remove and think something else. There is a comparative study with uh, between uh, these three kind of uh, uh, lubrication mechanisms which are dry, zero lubrication or maybe say whatever the naturally formed layer on the surface, second boundary lubricated which we are studying in this lecture and third which we will be discussing maybe in next lecture that is a boundary uh, that is a uh, fluid film lubrication. Surfaces are completely separated by the fluid film. If we plot uh, curves for these three condition, one for drive, second for boundary, third for the fluid, uh, fluid flow lubrication, then what kind of uh, uh, curves we get for the wear rate? Uh, uh, if I plot wear rate with the time, as the time increases, this is clearly showing a bottom curve. Wear rate decreases, remains stationary, and then goes up after certain duration. Well, in boundary case anything is possible. You say where it is decreasing initially is reaches to 1 point after that it can go and merge with 1 or can merge with 3. That means, if the surface roughness has decreased substantially boundary lubrication may turn out to be full uh, film lubrication mechanism or if the surface is disturbed irregularities have increased it can go and merge with the dry case our boundary lubricant will not be effective in that case. So, both the possibilities and that is why we say many times whenever we are buying any new car or new automobile, we need to operate vehicle at the lower speed. So, this boundary case is over, our second comes and merges with 3, then after that only we should operate at the high speed. Now, there are two other curves also, we say that wear rate versus load as the load is increasing, even the full flow lubrication will can sustain up to certain limit, beyond that it is going to be a boundary lubrication and a further if the load is increased further, then it may merge with the dry lubrication or in other words, uh, as the load is continuously increasing, 
lubricant may not be retained at the surfaces at the interface it will be simply squeezed out from the surfaces and if there is no dynamic load if there is no uh, reversible uh, uh, position change then lubricant will not be sucked back it will be simply moved out whenever the lubricant comes it will be simply moved out of the interface and we will be getting very high wear rate uh, we say that every lubricant need to be designed as per the load for high load we will be designing different kind of lubricant for low load condition we will be designing different kind of lubricants coming to temperature which has a more or less same factor or same effect as a load as the temperature increases we know that uh, detachment from the surface will increase even for chemical absorption case the temperature is supposed to be very high then rate of the wear will increase because of the more and more uh, uh, reaction with the surface. So, that fluid film uh, lubrication is merging with increase in temperature to boundary lubrication and beyond certain temperature is merging with a dry lubrication case. So, this competitive study indicates clearly whenever we design a system we should keep in our mind for how long we are want to operate it if for the longer duration we want we should operate under some condition which gives a favorable surface condition to the equipment and then uh, it should be operated under other condition. Same thing if uh, we want we know surely what kind of load is going to come and how much load is going to come then we should uh, design boundary additives or boundary lubricant or fluid film lubrication mechanism accordingly. So, uh, I will I'll, I'll just cover one experimental study which we did in our lab and uh, results are related to our boundary lubrication mechanism. You can see uh, this figure has a eddy current dynamometer which applies a load and the load, load applied in this case is from 0 to 75 Newton meter. There is a torque sensor which can measure how much torque has been applied and what is uh, this is a gearbox which is a test box where the gears are going to get tested. There is a motor to drive the gearbox. So, we are using both the things we are using motor to drive, we are using dynamometer to stop or apply the load, we are using both the combination and uh, torque sensor to measure how much torque has been applied and there is a display unit over here which will give a display of the torque. What we are talking the gearbox, gearbox is a 2 to 1 ratio, uh, we say that uh, pinion gear has a 22 teeth while uh, gear, t, uh, gear num number of teeth on the gear are 44. So, this at 44 divided by 2 and 22 gives us 2 to 1 ratio and uh, they are a standard uh, involute profile having pressure angle 20 degree and module is defined as a 2.5. We to find out uh, online uh, or we go ahead with the online measurement we use um, sensor unit what we know as an as online sensor instrument you can see there is a oil condition in sensor. What is the meaning of that? Oil will get disturbed, oil will can change quality continuously. If it is getting more and more acidic, then the tan number will decrease and that tan number will increase. Similarly, there is a possibility of corrosive wear. So, there is a moisture sensor. Moisture sensor clearly indicate if the um, relative humidity is very high then we should not conduct the experiments because a major governing factor will be corrosion and there is a mechanical action. So, there will be a corrosive wear. However, if we want to do corrosive studies or we want to do a study on a corrosive wear then we should be able to use with a some water environment a higher moisture environment. Above all there is a one uh, unit what we say as a total fer uh, ferrous wear debris analysis sensor. It is generally finds uh, iron particle how many iron particles are getting circulated uh, through the lubricating oil. So, it gives us uh, an indication of wear rate, higher the number of particle, higher the wear rate. That is why this unit is useful when it get attached with uh, this test setup. You can see there are number of tubings going uh, from this and this tubings are connected to this unit. You can see the tubings over here. In previous slide, here yeah, tubings are going and this unit is placed somewhere here. So, it gives overall leading to us. Let us start with some experimental leading. So, we say that we bought a new gearbox and we know whenever the gearbox is new it should not be loaded completely. So, what we uh, selected almost 0 load and 500 rpm speed. So, n is given in a 
uh, rpm that is a 500. I have will not use a uh, unit store here because the rpm is common unit and torque as a 0.35 newton meter. We did not have applied any torque from the dynamometer, but we know that during assembly there will be always some sort of misalignment. There will be some resistance from the assembly and that is uh, given as a 0.35 newton meter as a torque. We are not done anything purposefully, but it is coming because of assembly and this gives a iron percentage or iron concentration in ppm number of experiments and uh, this experiment was done in uh, uh, lubricating oil I would say the ATW90 is a motor oil and uh, it has a good EP additive package. This kind of experiment happened uh, and whatever the experimental result what we got is uh, that shows a related to humidity ranging from 45 percent to 55 percent. That means, it is not going beyond certain limits we can connect this kind of experiments without much problem. Just after doing experiments uh, just starting experiment we uh, took the reading and we found that the 74 ppm as a iron percentage or a concentration after um, 2 hours operation this percentage increased to 84. After that it remains almost a CD 77, 73, 69, 65. Interesting thing you said when we do this kind of thing it is always in our mind after that if I want to operate this percentage should come down because bathtub curve says clearly initially where it will be high subsequently it will come down, but it did not happen to us. We increase the speed from 500 to 1000. You can see the minimum weight uh, this is in sequence after operating of the 10 hours we 11th hours was with this speed. They are in sequence all these experiments are in sequence so, this is 11th. This shows a 65 while this shows a 66 percent is increasing of course, there will be always a some inner accuracy. So, we cannot differentiate between 65 and 66, but as we are increasing uh, more and more number of operating hours we are finding more and more particle percent is coming in this. Either the Vistanado filter system is not working well or uh, something else is problem or another possibility is that the high temperature high speed means high temperature at a high speed there is uh, some uh, flush temperature is happening on um, chemical additives or is a EP additives are reacting with the surface they are corroding surface and then they are removing the top asperities that is why the percentage is increasing. To confirm that we increase the speed also you say from 1000 rpm to 1500 rpm keeping almost the same load no change in the load as such this is happening because of the misalignment or some inaccuracy in the surface. Now, what we are getting over here this purchase percentage is continuously increasing this means more and more corrosion happens to the surface or uh, even though we know the gear lubrication mechanism or that this uh, lubricant additives is known to be one of the very good uh, gear lubricant, uh, lubricant and still that we are getting this kind of wear particles. That means, the gears will never work in hydrodynamic domain, it will never work in fluid film lubrication mechanism now working in a mixed lubrication or boundary lubrication that is why we are getting their particles and the particle percentage is increasing with increasing speed. If the mixed lubrication case percentage will not increase it will come down. So, that is why we feel that uh, this kind of uh, experiments are um, showing the results related to the boundary lubrication mechanism. Let us see uh, other results. Second set of results uh, after changing the oil, we have changed the lubricating oil here. So, that all old particles whatever the were uh, getting dumped in the lubricating oil have been removed fresh oil. Fresh oil we are getting good readings at the 500 rpm you can see 43 36 uh, in other word we can say it has reached to a steady state condition or running in period is over for 500 rpm but it should continue for the 1000 rpm also 2000 rpm also. But what we got at the when we are operating at the 2000 rpm we are getting different environment we are getting different results you can see 89 from 36 it jumps to 89. After operating for the 7 hours when you are operating uh, that equipment for the 8th hour we are getting 89 uh, ppm that is much higher almost 3 fold compared to 36 and this percentage is increasing to a certain limit and after that it is decreasing. To get a confirmed results we operated at the one higher speed further 
and we can find there is a unbound lubrication uh, unbound ppm level from two, uh, 219 to 658. That means, the more and more uh, temperature is getting induced to the surface or some sort of uh, load is coming on the surface which is creating a uh, uh, higher uh, wear number of particles. However, uh, the stock sensor clearly indicates that the misalignment was not that dominant. It is only the speed which is changing the phenomenon at a high, it is giving higher wear rate. Now, I can think, I can think in a different way. I can say that when the speed is increasing, vibration level is increasing and load level is almost 0. So, additional vibration phenomena is happening and that is going to increase the fertic failure or is the fertic wear is going to increase with increase in the speed. To confirm that, what we did, we applied a load. So, that the vibration phenomena can be reduced, the vibration amplitude can be reduced even for high speed, it should not vibrate that much. So, of course, uh, before that we say that uh, uh, conclusion from this slide is the changing operating condition changes the dynamics of boundary lubrication layer. It is continuously changing, it is not a stationary. A 500 rpm it is showing a steady state condition, but when you are switching to 2000 rpm it is showing higher wear rate. As I mentioned one possible reason is a vibration continuous a periodic loading and that is going to induce fertic failure in a surface or at least the top aspirates are chopped off. So, we need to confirm that with a load. If I increase the load what is going to happen and of course, before that we try to find out particle size what is the range of particle size to diagnose whether particle size are minor size or um, uh, under a min, uh, mild wear domain or severe wear domain. And interestingly, we find too many particles uh, for the size between 5 to 15 micron. But interesting thing, this number of particles are continuously decreasing with the time. That means, it is, a, it is going for the betterment, it is going for the convergence. Continuously, number of particles are decreasing. Coming to 15 to 25 micron, we again the number of particles are continuously decreasing. So, that is a favorable situation. Uh, we can say starting uh, case it may be severe wear, but it is a still in controllable case. It is moving toward the mild domain or mild wear side. An interesting thing is that uh, we found couple of particles having size more than 100 micron and when we studied the uh, mild wear and severe wear we say that about 20 micron particles it is a severe wear. So, most of the domain case uh, in this case it will be the severe wear but they are not uncontrollable, they are controlled, they are moving to the right direction. That means, we do not have to worry too much and we know this is running in time, is a bedding in time where particles will be larger initially. This is for the 500 rpm, same thing was done for the 2000 rpm also. What we find again the same thing that uh, uh, number of particles are decreasing except for this case number of particles are decreasing uh, which are in a range from uh, 5 to 15 micron and there is no particle size, um, no particle which has a size greater than 100 micron that is a favorable case. In all other cases also we find that um, particles are decreasing in uh, numbers. So, these are the favorable situation they are bedding in time is uh, going hard. Uh, if you want to reduce a wear rate or reduce uh, this kind of particles then we should apply load and that is why we did experiment with the load also. Say rpm 200 torque apply load is a 5 Newton meter, wear rate or number of uh, the, the, say ppm level is continuously decreasing the 152, 154 uh, coming to the 107. Of course, a 2, 3 uh, ppm I am assuming that is inaccuracy or uh, it is not giving that much reliable results. Now, if I increase the load what is going to happen? See, I am increasing the load from 107, it is coming down to 100 and continuously decreasing to 69. That means, load is working. Whatever we are thinking, the vibration is creating some problem, is fertic failure or uh, related failure of the uh, related wear because of that is happening over here. Now, if we increase the speed and the torque, again we are getting lesser number of ppm or lesser ppm in this case. Same thing or same uh, results for the 800 also. 800 and at uh, load is higher side at 20 Newton meter it comes to results now 32 Newton meter that is indicating that is showing that bedding in time is coming to the closer or almost negligible level. After that we could not find any further improvement 
this clearly shows uh, uh, the number of uh, particle of the ppm level is reaching uh, almost 30 30 ppm and beyond that we are not able to improve whatever the load condition whatever the speed we are applying that remains on the situation or in other word if the load is applied this is a good now here we have removed the load also we have brought the torque almost to 0 level of course, I am not uh, using the word 0 0.3 Newton meter because all the torques are very high compared to 0 0.3, 0 0.4 Newton meter that is why we put value as 0 and uh, this is the, the 0 torque and 1000 rpm. Still we are getting good results now that is a complete bedding in uh, completely running in time or uh, we say the running in behavior. Now what is happening, why vibration does not happen in 1000 rpm? Now we can say there is a number of asperities which were earlier there, they have completely um, got flattened or torn away or removed from the surface and there is a some now marginal lubrication keep coming. Uh, we say that there is a fluid flume lubrication with some boundary uh, lubrication, there is some percentage of boundary lubrication and major percentage of, the, of uh, full flume lubrication that is why the gear rate uh, gear wear rate is low in this situation that is a favorable situation for us. Uh, we say that when we study um, uh, this uh, boundary lubrication mechanism, we are able to understand the mechanism in a different manner. We say that even though we know the bedding in time or bedding in behavior, the wear rate should be very high initially, it should reach to steady condition and after that it should uh, increase. While in this case uh, bedding in time, it shows that even though running in behavior is changing with the speed and changing with the load condition. That is why we need to understand system completely. If there is a possibility of a light load that is introducing a vibration, we should not introduce and that is a typical example for the rolling element bearing. We say whatever the dynamic load capacity of the rolling element bearing, we should never apply a load lesser than 3 percent of that. Reason being there will be more clearance and less load, less deformation of surface that will cause a more vibration less load carrying capacity and putting in that case will be much much faster compared to uh, with the load. In other words what we say that from Archer law as the load increases we are it will go down, but when it comes to the lubricated case when particularly the uh, boundary lubrication we are saying it is not the case quite possible increase in the load may decrease the wear rate it is not in that proportion itself. With this uh, I complete uh, boundary lubrication uh, mechanism, the next lecture we will be discussing about the mixed lubrication mechanism where uh, we will be thinking about uh, some portion of the surface undergoing boundary lubrication and remaining portion is undergoing uh, hydrodynamic or elastrodynamic or some other lubrication mechanism or uh, when talking about some other mechanism it may be a squeeze from lubrication mechanism also. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.